Six months ago, this client of mine had no blog. And now guys, check this out. In the last week, we've averaged around 50 clicks per day. Now this might not sound like a lot, but given the specific niche that these guys are in, which is a very specific online service niche, it's a decent amount of traffic that's already converting very well. So if we actually check our analytics here, we're taking a look at the organic search channel over the past few months, and we're taking a look at the revenue generated exclusively from the blog with a few CTAs throughout that blog, right? So let's take a look at this. So in June, we had zero, zero in July as well, $130 in August, back up in October, November, we did decently well, and December last month, we crossed the $1,000 in sales exclusively through the organic traffic from the blog. And now in January, with only the first seven days, we've already crossed half of what we made in the last month. So great results so far, and a lot more better results coming quite soon. Now, I wanna break down everything that I'm doing for the specific client so you guys can do the exact same thing with your website. Now, before before we get into that, if you guys want me to teach you SEO from scratch, check the link in the description to my course. I cover all the concepts that I'm going to talk about today in depth, and you can use the code 2023 at checkout for 25% off this week. Now, let's give some context to these results. It's important to be honest about all the things that are happening in the background. This is an online service business, and this is not a brand new domain. So this website has been up for five plus years, and they have a domain rating of between 30 to 35, right? So not a new website, but also not a massive domain rating. And so this is a great example of how you can scale a website's SEO using the blog, specifically for a website that has already done the basics correctly. So let's cover exactly what I'm doing for this client. Now, the first thing is keyword research, and it's not the usual type of keyword research where we're looking for low competition, high volume keywords, right? What I was looking for specifically for the content strategy for this blog were question themed keywords that were low volume and low competition, right? So as an example, let's say that I'm selling SEO software, instead of targeting keywords like SEO tool or backlink tool, I'm instead looking for keywords that are much higher in the funnel, things like what is domain authority, how to do keyword research, and all those different types of keywords. And I actually like to do things a little bit differently when I'm doing this type of keyword research. So if we go into Ahrefs quickly, instead of directly typing in that topic, something like SEO, or maybe typing in something like keyword research, and then using the filters to find that specific keyword, what I like to do is take a much more general approach. I like to add in that question question, something like how to will do quite well. I'll then take a look at the matching terms and I'll then use the include filter to add in that topic. So something like SEO, I'll show results and I'll have a much more filtered list of results that are specifically targeting that question side of the keywords that I'm looking for. Now I'm also going to quickly fix up this keyword difficulty since it looks quite scary. I'm going to say maximum of 10. And now we have a list that makes a lot more sense, right? So this one right here, how to boost SEO using schema. That's a phenomenal keyword that I could target if I was interested in this specific niche. And so again, guys, I'm not looking for high volume, low competition keywords. I'm looking for smaller keywords where I can have an assurance that I can rank properly within the first couple of months. So the main idea here is to basically collect a large group of these type of small keywords, rank properly, and then slowly increase the traffic that you're getting to the blog, right? This is tied quite closely with that compound SEO strategy that Kyle Roof and I were talking about in a previous video. There actually is gonna be a full video talking about compound SEO. You definitely don't wanna miss out on that. Now, a second thing that I found while I was doing key research, which I thought I'd share, is that it really seemed like my competitors had completely missed out on the user intent. So given the informational nature of a lot of these keywords, so how to do X, I expected the results to be long form content in the shape of a blog. But instead, a lot of the competitors had landing pages that were specifically talking about that service that they were providing, which to me seemed like it was too aggressive, right? There were a lot of users that weren't really sure what they were looking for yet, and those landing pages weren't really fulfilling that intent properly. And so there were a couple clues of a few blog posts that were ranking quite well within the top five. And so by testing long form content on a lot of these keywords, we saw that the competitors had actually missed a pretty good opportunity to create that long form content and actually rank properly, right? And now we're seeing that all of our long form articles are ranking above most of our competitors that have those simpler landing pages that are slightly more aggressive than a blog post with a couple of CTAs. That's also something that's interesting to think about. Check the results for those keywords. Your competitors might not have gone gotten that user intent correctly. Second thing I want to talk about here is the content structure. So the first thing is I like to use Surfer SEO. Page Optimizer Pro is also a great tool. You can find a link to both of those tools in the description. But Surfer SEO basically gives my content writers really great guidance in terms of the keyword density, in terms of the length of the content, and also all the terms they should be including in the article. The second thing here is I'm still using that classic content structure that I've been speaking quite a lot about in this channel. And so that's having one H1 with that main keyword and then 
basically breaking down your content into a variety of sections, right? Those sections will be separated by some type of heading, either an H2 or an H3, and those will also have some type of variation of that main keyword. The third thing here, guys, is I want to talk about snippet bait because this blog is actually a perfect example of snippet bait working out extremely well. So check out these results on Ahrefs here. So we're looking at the blog here. I'm not able to show you guys the exact keywords and the exact URLs, unfortunately, but what you can see is the volume, which a lot of these keywords, again, are small, but there's a decent amount of high quality traffic coming in. And the second thing is take note of these single quotes here. That basically means that we now have that featured snippet for that keyword. So if we scroll down a pretty solid amount of featured snippets, especially given that we haven't published that much content, we've published around 20 pieces of content in the last six months. We're prioritizing quality over quantity, which I highly recommend that you guys do as well. So the main thing here, guys, is that our snippet bait worked, right? We planned and we tried to get as many featured snippets as possible. And as this content is now being picked up by Google, we're going to see more and more featured snippets. If you guys want a full breakdown on my featured snippet strategy, you guys can find a video right here. I highly recommend you guys add in snippet bait to all of your content. And now guys, just as a last thing, I like to add a table of contents to all my long form content. I think that really helps users to identify all the different sections of the content so they have a better experience, especially when that content is very long. Now, as a third thing, I'm just going to list a bunch of extra things that we've done to this content that's helping it to rank so well. So the number one thing is working with an expert. I talk about this a lot on this channel. We basically found an expert of this topic for this business on Upwork, and she also happens to be a phenomenal writer. And so she now has her own author page where she talks about her experience. There's also a link to her LinkedIn and her personal website and all of that good stuff. And so on top of that, she also has her own author profile attached to every single article that she's written or that she's been involved with. The second thing is publish consistently, guys. We like to publish one article a week. Again, we haven't published a lot of content, but every article that we do publish is very high quality. That consistency definitely helps. Number three, internal links. We want to make sure that every single blog post that we're publishing is well connected. And this is important as you scale your content, make sure that you aren't accidentally creating orphan pages and that the authority of the website is flowing properly throughout. And the fourth thing, and probably the most important guys is patience. Now, these results take time. As you guys saw, we're six months in and we're finally starting to see results. Those results are finally starting to turn into meaningful sales and revenue. And so had the client dropped me a couple months into the project, we wouldn't really see the growth that is happening now and the growth that's about to happen, which I believe is going to be really significant. If you guys like this case study, I highly recommend you guys check out this video. And as always, the link for my course is going to be in the description and to all the other tools that I spoke about. I'll see you guys in the next one.